Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. I'm doing a session for a client, 45 minutes of distance, psychic wisdom and energy healing. The goal here is to help this client see the most powerful light side of themselves and become in alignment, in tune with that vibration, that energy in order to take stronger steps <laughs> towards being their true self, their most powerful light version. Anything that's on the negative side that's deterring you from that, yeah, we'll look at that. <laughs> so I'm going to read your goals here. I want to thank you so very much. It's a pleasure to get to help you today. I can't wait to see what we discover. Thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube as well. There's a lot we're going to learn from you and experience. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Okay. So your goals are this. <laughs> Hello, Abby the Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. You say, what is the most powerful light version of myself that I feel I'm heading towards each day that goes by in this lifetime? I truly want to get to a point where my chakras align to shine so bright for others to learn from and to assist them with becoming a more positive human. Are there any unseen, dark, negative attachments attempting to derail my growth health-wise, financially, with spirituality, living abroad, and or with finding love on my new journey? I know you will dig extra deep to find the answer I need at this time, as always. You're the best and hope 2024 is an amazingly blessed year for you and your family. Aw, thank you. <laughs> okay. So it's like the mirror effect, really seeing your reflection in the mirror that represents the most powerful light version. That's where your heart is at. That's what you seek to be in this life. So what can we do to discover that reflection of you and to truly know what, what that's all about, where your chakras are even aligning with that and shining bright for others? Then any unseen dark negative attachments... So it's like, are you attached to those attachments or are they attached to you? So whatever is encouraging you without you realizing it to shift away from being your strongest self, your most powerful light version. Yeah, we'll, we'll look for that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you want to empower your growth health wise. You want to empower your growth financially with spirituality, living abroad and or with finding love on your new journey. Okay, so you want to empower those aspects of your life. All right. I'm just getting truly in alignment with all the language because you, um, you're you putting it out on the table and I really like what you're serving up here. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that I'm tuning into everything and honoring your request completely. So... <sighs> Okay. I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. I'm going to relax, close my eyes. And we are going to get to know you, get to know the meaning of all of this and help you to reach a next level with yourself. Okay. There aren't any specific pictures yet. I'm still getting into alignment here. It's not just a vision. It's the heart of who you are. It's not just words. It's material. I mean, it's you wanting to become that way of being. I'm moving through a lot of, it's almost like the, how would I describe it? It's just like white and clear and very dense. And I'm just kind of like flying through it at a comfortable pace. I could even be slingshotting a billion miles per hour, but I can't really tell. I'm just moving through dense clarity. That's also kind of milky white. Nothing's really happening here. I'm just going and going and going and going peacefully until I get to that place. So there's quite the distance here to go. 
Okay. Okay. It's kind of like splat. <laughs> I'm kind of like a Play-Doh ball. And I'm not so liquidy. But I splat against a pretty intricate door. It's very beautiful. I don't know if it's made out of metal or wood, but maybe... What if there's like a substance that's metal and wood combined? <laughs> I think it, it looks like metal wood. <laughs> it's beautifully carved. It's huge. It's a big door. It's like for a giant. It's rounded at the top. It has uh, two big uh, rounded sort of handles. You, you, you'd have to be quite strong to open this door, okay? And I just hit it. I guess I, I guess I got there, <laughs> hit the door, and now I'm just standing here like, oh, wow, this is cool. So this is where we, we begin. Here we are. <laughs> what is this place? I don't know. Metal wood. <laughs> okay. It uh, takes a great deal of strength to open the door. You're, so that, that tells me part of you achieving this goal, it's going to require strength to achieve the goal. You have to ask yourself, what kind of strength, like muscle or a different kind of muscle, like integrity? Uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of strength. And even I am representing not strong enough. <laughs> I'm like, Ugh! it's very cartoony. I'm just like trying all these ways to open this door. And I'm like, <gasps> how do we open it? <laughs> takes great strength. And I get to wondering, what if it's not just one, that but many? Like, what if our strengths together, our strengths combined opens it? You, you appear here and you say, but I don't know how to bring people together so we can all open the door together. I don't know how to get people on the same page as to what this is all about. It's like, um, okay, okay, I'm just going to say this. I've come across this where you could say people who are heart-centered aren't here to market themselves. They're not here to influence you. They're not here to sell a product or sell an idea because that's not what life is all about. As somebody who's really driven of the mind and the ego seeks uh, power and visibility, uh, fame, perhaps. So there's a conflict in what it means to... It's not like you're selling the idea of the importance of love. Why do you even have to sell that idea? Like, why is that a product that we need to sell? Because it won't ever be love if it's a product that must be sold. It'll always be of the ego, so it's not going to be authentic. This is an important message. Because this tells me that you are, let's say that you are unsuspectingly so. When you look in the mirror, your most powerful light side. And you wouldn't give yourself credit for that because to be that is a little bit more profound than you, the human, would perceive it. But let's say you're already standing in those shoes. And to this most profound light side of yourself is... Um, part of a, a movement of, of selling the product of love. It's kind of a strange way to talk about it. But I see there has to be many on board with this voice and this vision, and that together you open great doors that take a lot of strength to open them. So does is it muscle? Is it the mass quantities of people that then open this door? The door perhaps isn't necessarily revealing you on the other side, but the change you seek to see in the world. And then it, it's counting on you to achieve that profound goal, that through you, this change is going to take place. But if through you, you're not selling the product of love and nobody's really listening, then there's a lack in you being able to achieve your goal, which means you must not have aligned with your most profound light side <laughs> because um, something is uh, missing the point here, okay? <laughs> it's like missing the boat, you know? 
all aboard the love boat, okay? All aboard. Hey, how come I'm the only one standing here? I, I must not be my highest self, my most profound self, because I'm just not, I'm not getting people on board. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> okay, so naturally, there's still a mystery to the image of the metal wood door. That takes great strength to open. And I'm questioning, is it just you and you alone that opens it? Or is it a community of people that we open it together? Like, how about I say, okay, I'm going to help you with this. I'm going to try to open this door with you. And maybe us two could be enough. Uh, but maybe there needs to be thousands, you know? So my guides are, we're going to kind of stop there with this conversation. So you get to think about this. Um, what's the next thing? <sighs> All right, the, it's almost like where we stand is on a wheel and the wheel is on the ground. So even this door is part of the wheel. So, so the wheel turns and the door actually goes around. And when it comes back, it seems to do a few rotations. And when it comes back, it's a different kind of door. And we're actually in a different kind of environment and it's a bit creepy. <laughs> okay. It seems like this door is made out of obsidian and it looks like um, solidified water that's black and it's got like ripples and waves and it. it's really cool looking. I really like this door. I don't know why it's, it's really cool looking. It's almost like if fire could be solidified and it, it, it would just and it would be like black fire be solidified. It's I don't know. It's really, really cool looking door. Maybe I'd, I'd see this in some like fantasy world and it'd be like a gateway to, I don't know, somewhere that I want to know what's on the other side and maybe I'd rather watch it on TV than participate <laughs> than going through that door because it is a little bit um, kind of dark, okay? There's something dark about it. I don't feel afraid of it though. So maybe I don't need TV to go through the door. <laughs> maybe I can just try this out. Next thing you know, go through the door and it's like the dimension of saw blades. And I'm like, okay, well, at least I know now in the spirit realm. <laughs> but it's kind of, it's okay. Like, it's a cool looking door. It's a little bit on the dark side. Don't really feel afraid of it. But we don't know what's on the other side. There's a being that's sitting in a... Uh, Kind of like an old school, single, um, it's an old green, rough looking chair. It doesn't lean back. Um, smaller, but fits one body. Close to a big fire. There's an oversized man in this chair. I don't know how he fits into it, but it's like a giant fitting their their body into like suctioning in there <laughs> almost like they're gonna wear this chair when they stand up this being's also made out of like the solidified black fire and he's quite functional i mean he's not like the tin man that needs to be oiled like he's fully functional he can move uh, almost robotically so. It seems like he has many spinning hands, arms, shoulders, like everything. He could spin everything. And I ask him, why are you by the fire? Are you made out of solidified black fire uh, and you're by the fire? Like warming your hands or something? You're incredible. Like you're an incredible being. What are you doing in here? Again, there is a bit of a... I don't know, like, I don't think creepy is the word for it. It's just some strange undertones, okay? <sighs> like something feels... Like, I want to see what it is, but I just can't. And it's not necessarily comfortable. Like, it's a not good thing. It's when, let's say it's, it's a, I don't know, a Twilight Zone episode and it turns out your loving parents are um, actually really into really sick satanic stuff. And now you're trying to relate to your entire life and what you thought your parents were all about and then you just realize this and it's like, 
it's almost like there's a weird undertone, like we're going to learn something that is going to change everything in a way that we don't know what reality is at this time because it never was this until today. <laughs> so it's got that kind of undertone, like we're going to find out some news that is so mind-blowing it's going to change our even our relationship with ourself our life everything that was our memories on and on and on okay that's the undertones of this space with this giant made out of fire solidified black fire super movable guy stuck in a tiny little chair warming hands by the fire he just doesn't he it's like he doesn't want to acknowledge that we're here. You and me, we're here. He doesn't want to acknowledge it. And I tried talking to him about the other door, the wood metal door, and how it's going to take a great deal of strength to open it. And I came a long way to find this area. And I want to see this through. And the revolving ground changed everything. And now I'm in this place. So... What What is your response? Like, talk to me here, you know? I <laughs> feel like I'm talking to a wall. Come on now. You know what's interesting about this? <sighs> okay. Okay. This is the best parallel I can give you about what's happening here. So... In the world today, you will have these sort of bandwagon events. And while the bandwagon events are going on and everybody's signing up to be a part of this new drama, um, while you least suspect it, things are changing. You can't really see how and you can't really put your finger on it. But the more and the longer you're distracted and that you seek to participate, like right now, I am... The most sensible thing is to get to know why I'm here, what's the importance of this, how is this going to help you, what's your connection with this place, and I can't really acquire those details without some conversation with this being. All the while, this being is completely ignoring me on purpose, because he's got something else in, in, um, like in his scope, and I start to notice this space is starting to fill up with a strange orange color. And so it's telling me that where I'm putting my energy and attention is a trap. And I need to count on myself to pay attention to the other details that aren't so easily seen. This is important for you. This is an important message for you. So I'm, I'm just going to pay attention now to the orange. I've like kind of written this guy off. I don't care if we ever get to know him or not. I want to see... I'm going to have to, okay, my guides are telling me, how do you, like, if you can't conceive of what tomorrow holds, how can you prepare for it? If you can't conceive of it, how will you, it's like, um, let's say uh, you think that tomorrow holds a famine. So you start stocking up on all this food, but tomorrow actually holds no ground. So you should have stocked up on a parachute. You fool. Okay, so it's like, well, all I can do is go with a hunch, but a hunch is just, there's not a lot uh, of clarity, so it's, uh, it's really hard to even have a clue how to prepare, and there aren't any answers. All right, we're, you and I, we're now walking back to the revolving floor, and we're starting to realize that this being represent represents needing us in order to have purpose and his purpose is to trap us and to do something but it's just it's kind of like um, he's just trapping himself so all of this is not a trap for you and me it's a trap for whoever wants to participate in that trap there's nothing really to sort out other than to realize I'm not going to participate, I'm not going to have anything to do with this. I'm going to follow my own skips here, my own steps. You're not going to be my Pied Piper, okay? <laughs> so we're getting back on the circular ground. Just kind of walked into that room. And something in your heart is turning upside down and it's sinking into the motions and then sinking into the sacral chakra. So this is really um, turning your heart upside down. It's, it's making you sad at the core of yourself. 
and that that sadness is like being digested in the motions here so your heart and your emotions it's like there's digestion of your heart and then it's going into the sacredness of who you are and the sacredness of life itself and so this is like really saddening for you and you asked me, well, well, how do I align? It's almost like talking about time and time's running out. This is very much aligned with the, um, it, the, the it's doomsday thinking, you know? It's, um, and the world is kind of, it, it's, it's definitely not hiding it, <laughs> that it's on a fast track to destruction, you know? I mean, it's very clear. Like, it, and so, we just watch and wait and as we hit the wall and we all just freaking shatter to pieces and die or we stop the dang train. So what do we do here? We just like keep j jumping on these, these ludicrous bandwagons while this weird stuff is trapping us. It's not really, it's like trapping the one who creates these traps because they don't want to be, it's, it's, it's distortions in the mirror, okay? But your heart is sad, your emotions obviously sad, not happy, it, sacredness of life itself, um, sad, okay? That's what this really represents. But what's interesting is where is the light, lightest side of your higher self? Why isn't this part of you coming forward to talk about this stuff? Like why is it up to you to figure it out? You know, but why are, why, how do we advertise love? How do we get, get people on board with what really matters? It's love. So if you can't see love as a valuable product, and it's almost like, how is your higher self ever going to teach you how to figure this out? It's like, there's a, there's a mystery riddle in here. There's uh, the silent language here. It's, it's almost like a paralleled connection. Your connection with the human race in this life, your higher self's connection with you. So where you keep something at a distance, only way I could describe that something is you can't sell love as a product. You can't, it's just absurd. Well, is it? I mean, maybe there needs to be billboards. I love you with a smile hugging family members you know maybe we need to ha start having billboards all over the place that actually represent what love is to remind people that there are those of us who haven't given up on this and we still believe in this and now we're advertising it because who is uh, controlling the market doesn't want to go there you know so then who does the rest of us we we're starving for pictures that are loving we're starving for company and family and hugs and, hey, I baked some cookies. You want some? Um, we're starving for this. Therapy. Love therapy, you know? All right. So I do. I can tell there's a strange distance between you and the thing that you know you've got to do that hasn't been self-realized yet because it's kind of strange still. And it does feel like maybe it's not just a muscle of integrity. It is a muscle of people. Because you have a, a million people on board with an idea and they'll, they're passionate about it. Dang, can move mountains, you know, with passionate people. You have a collective, you know. Well, okay, so I want to actually talk to this part of your higher self. Like, I, I actually want to visit this i want to hear this part's of voice because this for some reason it's almost like you're not allowing yourself to hear it therefore i'm gonna have a hard time hearing it so i'm gonna have to i learn about you and your energy and your energy's relationship with the goal okay but then maybe there's a way i can just go to your higher self as like a separate entity from yourself even though you and your higher self are one like I said in the beginning, what if you already are standing in those shoes and that when you look in the mirror, you are that person already? That hasn't really... F it's like, how, well, who do you need to be to be that person more? Well, if I really am that person, then I would, I would this, that, and the other thing. I'm not doing that. So obviously there's something in the way. 
well, it's just a self-realization is the only thing that's in the way is you haven't taken ownership of the self-realization yet. And sometimes it takes time to build the spark, the passion and the courage um, to try something and to not give up on it when it doesn't work out for 5, 10, 20 years. <laughs> then it convinces you that you're doing something wrong. There's something wrong with you, but society isn't there yet or whatever, you know? And so that's that's a life story in a nutshell, right there. But what's your what's what I want to just sh see this higher self as an entity and actually talk about that. Okay, is the next thing. <sighs> you don't you wh okay okay okay. This is important. You basically, so you are going to be a part of this with me and we're kind of, because, it, okay, we're in a dark environment and there's fire and it's dry rocks, cave-like, humongous cave though. We're kind of at like this jetted out point and we're kind of overlooking this just fire, just really red and orange, massive, biggest fire ever. There's no lava. I don't even know what's feeding the fire, but the fire is here. And it illuminates this whole massive cave. Lots of the colors brown in the rocks, okay? And so you're just standing here at the edge. You're looking across the fire. But it's like you don't want to see this. You don't want to see this. Because this can't be right. This can't be that part of myself. There's something wrong, like... Why would the brightest, most empowered part of me be in a cave with a bunch of fire, brown, jagged rocks? That, that sounds like hell. That doesn't sound like my highest, most pristine, beautiful, higher self. Okay, so we got <laughs> we to solve the riddle here, don't we? Okay, let's, let's, let's just be okay with seeing stuff that's outside the box, the realm of what we think is correct, okay? I think, therefore, it's got to be correct. And now i got to challenge my thinking to experience a next level correctness. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're really stretching me here. Okay. <sighs> because it's sensitive. Because this is about wholeness and beauty and... It's like flowers of people that are open to one another and they sing their songs. This looks not like flowers. This... <sighs> You're angry now. Suddenly you pound your fist. What, what, suddenly there's some kind of like fencing appears here. Stone fencing. It's smooth. It's like, who? Who came down and laid some bricks? <laughs> but you're like, pow, on this fence. And you, when you go pow, you start to shatter into broken chunks of rock that are holding themselves together. And you're very angry. And there's something, um, a hidden whisper about being lied to. And it kind of reminds me of Wizard of Oz with a humbug behind the curtain. And he creates this like essence of this all-powerful wizard that he's supposed to be, but he's just like mechanically creating it. So there's this big face that starts to appear. And you look at this big face and it's got the art. It's like the, a mask that is happy and a mask that is sad. And they're kind of connected at the center. And it's all like laughing in despair. And it makes you so bitterly irritated and it just laughing in despair is broken souls, you know? It's that laughter. We all know what it sounds like. It's like the Joker having a great day, but it's it's torturing others. So where's the joy? It's broken souls. This broken essence of love. It, it's The wound is so painful. Just you, you ever a kid and your parents get so irate, you just start laughing, but you're, you know it's not funny. You just, you're just trying to like lighten the energy because this is really overwhelming and strange. Why are my parents making those faces and saying those words? It's kind of like um, there's this innocent childlike energy that creates um, genuinely, let's, let's be playful, let's not go there. Here it's just like 
the wound is so great in the spirit realm. It's like it can't cry. It just becomes sick. And in that sickness, it just starts to laugh in order to cope with what has become the mangled, contorted face of hell. So it is what it is. Like that's, that bothers you a great deal. And I'm starting to see that part of your role here, because you, you're a love bringer, <laughs> it's a cool thing to say. You're a love bringer, you know? And th this is this is not the way, you know, this happy, sad face, this contorted laughter of the broken soul. It's not the way it, 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 it just it's like so enraging because it's there's so many people trapped in, in a toxic nightmare. They, they don't have the, the tools or the capacity that they, they need leadership, truly. But again that every when i say this they need leadership it's like mm, who am i to say that they need a leader they need to find that leadership inside themselves i can't show them the way they gotta find it inside themselves maybe you can show them the way maybe you are a leader and maybe it's okay to be a leader maybe it's okay to have a voice that is your own this is your product of love and this is what you're selling and it's actually going to help people get out of despair. Isn't that a product the society needs? And we market something that actually works, that is actually healthy and good for people. So I, I feel very strongly that the heart, what heart-centered needs to work on, it, it's like, I feel it myself. I can't, I, I have a hard time telling people what to do, I mean, you're seeking a vision, you're seeking it. So because you've sought it, I can provide for you my vision. But I, I have this weird resistance and I feel, I, I feel like it exists with those who are heart-centered people because we have to work on ourselves too. Uh, we have to realize the value of who we are and the value of what we have to share actually is a medicine for this world. And I just, like, I don't want to commercialize it because it, it's like this natural thing, but starting to even question it myself that, well, why not? You know, it's something good for the world. This, it's a good thing. So there might be a parallel here for you where you're waking up to realizing how it's important to market something of the heart of humanity and that marketing the heart of humanity is an important part of the balance does mother nature come out of the woodwork and say here take these herbs it's going to cure you or do you have to find it and you hope in your lifetime something of the invisible whispers will guide you to what you seek and it takes years and years of trial and error to figure it out and now you have an answer that can actually reach the world and we could use that as a tool for future generations and so it just seems like natural that we're helping each other out. But in this society, you, you've got a product and you got a product and you market it and you sell it. And it's, it's just like, because to survive is to have wealth. I mean, you can't just have a house without paying for it. You can't just take some groceries without buying them. You know, so we have to honor that about each other's journey, that the time invested deserves a financial reward. So this is kind of an oddly sensitive conversation. I feel it. I feel it sensitive. Talking about you are this aspect of your higher self. So the next thing to awaken to is you, you time and energy to bring love back into this world. In a world where we have products and marketing, you, you're worthy and deserving of a financial reward for that. So it's, it's opening that up because, you know, people who work with, um, you know, forgiveness and gratitude and generosity can linger in a place of, yeah, it's like, um, you see money as the root of all evil, therefore you don't want anything to do with it and yet you need it. So Okay, now we're going to get back because because you, I feel like this conversation is important to where we stand. 
to the moment where you pound your fist on this like perfect brick sort of wall. It's just a fence because you can see over it. You're looking at laughter and sadness simultaneously, feeling the despair of the soul, then this fiery hell. And here you are to see the most profound version of your higher self. And in this mirror, you, you're breaking apart and holding yourself together again because this is the anguish of your soul. It's like knowing money is the root of all evil and yet I have to dance and play with it. It disgusts me. And now we have all these shattered souls and what am I supposed to do about this? So this is like the next r painful riddle that um, we got to explore it, okay? Because this is kind of, um, it, it's part of your steps and it's part of your self-discovery. It's part of your work and it's part of the strength that is required to open the door, okay? Okay. You can't fix it. You can't. You look at the giant faces of this weird representation of your higher self. And you stand there bewildered and defeated. And it it's not okay. This is why you came here to triumph good over evil in a way. Like, can't we say that? Can't we say good must triumph over evil? Because can't we say we want to live in a good world with good people? Is it too much to ask for people to have respect for one another? Another? Is that a, an offensive thing to, to expect? Integrity? It's not that hard. And it's important that you go through this because you're starting to break apart and you're becoming a pile of rocks. I see an angel come from the sort of uh, the mask of happiness, the mask of sadness, like the arts is kind of the masks. It come, an angel comes through and it has a, a really cool sword and it's made out of like glistening light. It's very Christian looking angel and it's massive. It's got like um, white garment, white wings, kind of curly hair it's on the blonder side. It's like a, a male face that, I mean, if a human being looked like that, they wouldn't, I don't know. It's like kind of like artwork. It, it's just like a weird shaped chin and nose with tiny lips, you know? <laughs> so, but it's a, it's an, a very Christian looking angel. It's massive. The angel sets its feet down here at this sort of place where it's jutted out. But it also does not ever touch the ground. It's like one inch above the ground. And you are the space. You are the fire. You are the, the cavern. You're the light that illuminates the cavern. The arts of the happiness and the sadness. You know the despair of souls because you know it. That's what makes you a higher self. To truly comprehend it. To have lived it, even. You're handed this sword. And it it's like, it's a representation of a weapon, right? And war. For some reason, the name of the sword is, is like... Uh, I see the balancing scales like justice... But it, it's, um, I want to define it a little bit more than that. So I would define the sword's name as justice. And justice seems harsh, right? It's a harsh punishment. But it does it's like um, balance, though. If one has done something wrong, one must pay. They, they must learn. They must be held accountable. And for those who are doing of the right things, and they are they are a representation of a bright world, okay? So um, we need to encourage more of the light on this, this earth. 
And if you are renouncing the light or you are trying to harm the light, or you're trying to eradicate the light from our world, there has to be a, a learning curve. There has to be a held accountable. So the sword doesn't hurt anybody. It only, it's almost like, it also represents time because I see a clock and I see the sword and it goes like, like it points in the direction of a divine time. It also is like, um, it, it's sort of like, okay, on the tip of this sword, if the tip rests upon the heart, it illuminates the light with, from within, okay? So it brings out something of illumination and beauty. And, okay, this is interesting because the same goes no matter where you are on the spectrum of of being in a benevolent or a malevolent person. So <clears throat> when justice touches the heart of a benevolent person, it gives them permission to love themselves completely and to be inspired to create kind of an effect of their own energy, of their own song, of their own nature. When it touches the heart of a, a malevolent person, there's a tiny little crystal on the inside and that crystal is their true nature, their true voice. Their true voice is sort of overshadowed by all this muck. They become mucky. And when this touches that spark inside their heart, the spark it starts to grow. And it's a bit scary because the mirror starts to appear and they have to live with themselves. They have to face their soul and their soul's decisions in the mirror. And that is a very horrifying thing when you become aware of the choices you've made and how that has hurt people and actually see the faces of every soul you ever encountered, the ones that you crossed paths with or made decisions that affected their life in such a consequential way where you were being greedy when you made that decision or you were being um, bought and paid for. It's just like um, the circumstances of why you make the decisions you make. Was it um, truly caring or was it selfish? So I see when this justice, sort of justice, hits their tiniest spark, um, a beautiful love is actually filling in their essence, but it's a hard kind of love because it's the soul, are you able to love yourself for every decision you've ever made? And I see that you, you carry this, and it, it's all about love. Everything about it is about love. The sword that touches the malevolent, is a very loving thing and while you might see them in a contorted state of pain and suffering there's no laughter about it because there's reconciliation now and the love and the light is guiding that soul to be able to work on facing their decisions and becoming more profound and those that have learned what they need to learn or they just choose to be on the benevolent side just that's the way they are it's like giving them permission to be so proud of themselves, be so um, illuminated in light, and even more helpful to everyone around them. More peaceful, more patient, um, more loving, more laughable, even joyful, playful. And you're starting to see that the justice isn't necessarily about hurting anyone it's about filling them with light. And the light, the illumination, is the love that helps them self-realize. It's not um, holding them into a place of self-imprisonment. It's creating light in the dark places. They put the darkness there because they can't face themselves in the mirror. Now we're going to f help them face themselves in the mirror. So that is what creates a, a beautiful ripple in the pond. This is not a conversation about money or products or anything like that. This is just a conversation of a spiritual truth. And you thank the angel for giving this to you. You're not a pile of rocks. You actually hold a, a tool, a useful tool in the palm of your hand. Now, the next thing is you, you want to make a difference in a grander way, like you want to reach more people <sighs> because you're, you're now standing here alone, the angels disappeared, the fire's gone out because you're not angry anymore. 
you're looking at the memory of this conversation, the sword isn't really illuminated right now. It's just a handle. And you're a bit strange in your mind, but you go back to that revolving floor and you go to that room where the being is sort of stuck in the chair. And you create an intention and you say, I give the light of justice to this being. And it illuminates the sword. And you go to the being from the backside because it refuses to acknowledge you. And you touch its heart. It literally goes into its body, but not, it's like energy. So it just like goes in like energy and it just touches the heart of this being. This being immediately almost like comes engulfed in flames. And the, all the fire is purifying and it's a bit painful. Because I hear they're screaming on the inside. That it's, it's burning away this buildup. It's burning away this material. It's burning this whole space away. Even that cool door burning away. There's nothing really cool about this place. I see now when everything has been burnt. And it's just you standing here with basically the handle of justice, a sword. You look at a very tiny little person. Very scrawny, maybe even a child. Very skinny, small child. The child kind of falls into a pile. They fall apart. And it reminds you of you when you fell apart. And you wonder why are you, are you falling apart? And I hear a whisper talk about like when the inconceivable must be faced, we will all fall apart. And so when you have to face the inconceivable truth, you might be angry only because you don't understand love yet. But you also do understand love. You just need a reminder. So we need to go through this sort of process of breaking down and then being rebuilt stronger. And people of heart center or people of ego center um, will have our own breakdowns. It's just normal. But now you reach a hand out and this child is kind of like ashy, okay? Burnt everywhere. That you don't think less. You actually just want to repair and move forward. And you just pick up the child and you say, why don't you come and help me with this heavy door? I, I need more strength. Then maybe together we create that strength. A boy uh, kind of persecutes you for destroying his life, basically. <laughs> then turning him into this like child that has to hold itself together instead of be a pile. I just wanted you to leave me alone and let me rot. And so, um, but you're like, that's not what this is about. That's not what life and living is about. It's about what can we do to make it better? And by you participating and helping open this door, it's helping me, it's helping you, it's helping all of us. He's still bitter. He wants nothing to do with it. And you kind of wonder if justice, the sword can help. So you just say justice, the sword and I feel like this bitter child now needs more light, needs uh, more help, understanding the language of love. And so you touch this child with the sword just at the tip in the heart and the child instantly like melts and becomes like a child made out of water. All the material comes off and is just like a liquid child. And the child still has a grimace on the face, but the light starts to shine through all the water. And the child goes into a rest state for a while. And there's angels that come and take this child into another dimension. And I hear whispers say it's not time for this one to be part of the opening of this door. And it still feels like just you. And it feels like your task to figure this out. How do you get people to help? How do you get people to see this? Do you even know what this is? I ask you, what do you think this door is? You kind of become part of the door and by becoming part of the door, you realize that you must open up as well. So the strength really is inside yourself and it's going to require you to open up because something in how you, it, it's, it's kind of like we can manipulate ourselves without realizing it. 
And we can convince ourselves that oh, that's not the right thing to do when it actually is the right thing to do. And it's opening up more. It's opening up, seeing the value of you, seeing the value of what you're offering and, and knowing that it's safe to um, let that be a part of uh, the, the growth and development of something beautiful in this world, right? Because you are something beautiful in this world. So, okay, so you're asking, I'm just going to hang in there for another minute or two. You're asking your higher self, as a separate entity, okay? How do I open these doors? I keep being shown we're on a small boat in the ocean and the sun is setting. It's peaceful. There's no threat weather-wise, okay? And we're in a small boat though, so it seems like maybe the threat is a small boat that we're in because we're really out there. <laughs> Uh, there's no need for food or water here. It's really just a peaceful boat. Kind of alone out in the middle of the ocean. And there's a weird question about how do you open your doors when you're alone in the middle of the ocean? There's no point. It's more like uh, maybe you open your doors to peace, to meditation. Maybe you open your doors to fishing, catching fish. Maybe you open your doors to sleeping under the stars in a small boat. It's not like opening your doors to anything but something within yourself. Feels like... Um, it's kind of like um, a lack of true satisfaction. A lack of, um, like, again, it feels like, okay, a missing link of sorts. Like you seek the pearl um, in the shell that nobody had discovered. Like you seek the, that special um, sort of twinkle that, that really saves the day. So how is opening the doors on the singular boat, small, out in the middle of the ocean, like, okay, I open it to peace, I open it to meditation, but... I want to open it to something a little bit louder, you know, turn up the volume. Um, it's truly magnificent. And suddenly you just stand up and you start singing. And you sing actually to God in a way. It's like um, a light language sort of thing, but it's tonal. And you're opening up the ocean and a big being comes out of the ocean. And the being holds justice, and justice now is placed upon your heart. And you seek, actually, the illumination of justice to bring out your most extraordinary light, your, mo your highest caliber. And you welcome it. You welcome the challenge of it. You welcome the love of it. You welcome the celebration of it. You're not afraid. And I, I, we're taken back to that bitter moment with the fire. And it's okay to fall into these little ruts because it's it's a circulation of energy that is reconciling, healing, and then growing out of. So it's like a little memory glimmering here that in your highest potential, you'll have moments of human human moments where it is hard and you're facing like a big task and sometimes it weighs and shatters you a bit. But there's always an angel around the corner. There's always the sword of justice. There's always the divine time. There's always another opportunity. You are standing in the shoes of your highest self. <sighs> I love this, this sort of creature of the ocean. Because this creature of the ocean reminds me of you as well. Like something hidden and big. It carries a sword of justice. And is illuminating you. It's a part of you helping you. I feel like the ocean is. It can re represent emotion. Um, it's um, like water is a really powerful energy. Okay. It's like a conductor of electricity. It's, it's like. Um, I feel like it contains memory. Um, I feel like water is an extraordinary. Um, probably. There's a lack of exploration of, of all that water can do for us. 
So there's something amazing about sort of the ancient uh, energy or essence of yourself, this reflection of you, kind of Poseidon level, coming out of the ocean and then touching your heart with justice is bringing you to life. So there's a bit of, of the caliber of love and the caliber of the meaning of all of this and that you are sort of a leader, okay? You're, you're a leader, you're a human, you're in the shoes of your highest self. You're in the discovery of what you need to do next. It's in the divine time, right? You carry the sword of justice. You're touched by it. You touch others by it. Um, you're learning the strength it takes to open the doors. So you are realizing you will have to open up. So this is a really good session. I like the, the impact on the heart. There's a lot of impact on the heart here. A lot more breathability. A lot of depth to reflect upon. And um, it's really solid next level alignment for you. Thank you so much for this. Thank you so much for sharing. It's uh, going to open up a lot of people who watch and listen and receive these representations because we can all relate to it in our own way. So thank you for that. And for those watching, if you're interested in exploring a session with me, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, have a great day, everybody.